about the technical difficulty. Um, for some few minutes, we're going to deal with um, the assurance of salvation. We are doing a 28-day challenge. Uh, basically, you're going to uh, learn the basis of your Christian life, and some questions are going to be answered for you. Assurance of salvation. Um, most people, most of us, ask this question. They may be watching me and asking the question, what can be done about my situation? Because everything doesn't seem to be okay. Um, there are three things that I want you to understand. There is eternal life. You can have eternal life. You can have forgiveness. And then you can escape from death. Uh, you may be asking the question that, Pastor, well, how do I escape from death? I'm not talking about spiritual death, but I'm talking of eternal death. When it comes to, uh, I'm not talking of physical death, sorry. I'm talking about eternal death. When it comes to um, death itself, the physical death, we die because of sin. We are dying because of sin. Without sin, we wouldn't die. We would have lived forever. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, that's where man began to die. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So there is a physical evidence of death, but there's also a spiritual death, and your situation can be like any other situation where you will escape eternal death, your sins will be forgiven, and then you will have eternal life. In the question of assurance of salvation, once we want to be sure of our salvation, there are three things we are asking. How can I be sure that he can save me? How can I be sure? These are some of the questions we ask. How can I be sure that God can save me? And it's very simple. The Bible clearly states so that he is able to save us. See, when Jesus came and died, he died because of you and I. And so by his death, we are saved. He did not just die for some people. He died for all of us. And I'll come back to that again. And sometimes... We need proof. What is the proof? The proof is this. That Jesus Christ died and rose again from the dead. That is very significant. And he lives forevermore. There are people who died and they rose again, but they died again. But Jesus died and rose from the dead and is living forever. The reason why Christ died is that he died in the place of the believer. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So he took upon uh, himself all our sins and died in our place. So instead of us dying, he died for us so that we will live. So Christ died so that you will live. But then, how do we know that God is satisfied? How do we know that God is satisfied with this? Because the wages of sin is death. The Bible says that God gave us a gift in Christ Jesus. And how did he do it? Because he was satisfied with what Jesus did. He raised Jesus from the dead. That is very significant. And he didn't just raise him up, but he raised him up eternally. With a glorified body, not to die again. He was fully satisfied. So the resurrection of Christ shows that God is fully satisfied with what he did for us. You see, 
you are a Christian because you believe in this. This is the difference between you and somebody who doesn't believe at all. You believe that Christ came on this earth, that he is God, and that he died for your sins, and then he resurrected to the newness of life, eternal body, and he was risen up and is seated at the right hand side of God the Father. This is what your belief is. This is what makes you a Christian. If Christ has, has stayed in the grave, we wouldn't even be talking of salvation. Now, the next question maybe you may be asking is, how can I be certain that I have believed and I'm saved? Because sometimes or sometime in your life, you gave your life to Christ. And the question is, how can I be so sure, be 100% sure, that what I did was a full belief and then I'm saved? You see, there are times that we struggle with assurance. It is a basic thing. We do struggle with assurance. Now, there is nothing wrong with the doubt. And I'm going to explain something to you. I want you to uh, uh, be very attentive. It could be um, your belief, that strong belief you have, and also the Christ that lives in you, that sometimes makes you feel like you are doubting. Why is that so? Because maybe you look at your life and it's not exactly how you want it to be. Now, without the Christ in you, you will not even be having these thoughts. But because of the Christ in you, you look at your life and you think it has to be better than this. Secondly, sometimes when we have an encounter with God, because his life is revealed in us, it reveals who we are. And sometimes it makes us very sad and sometimes we, we feel that there is something not right. It doesn't mean that you are not a believer, but the Christ, the light of Christ, which is reflected upon you, is showing you some spots because we, will be we have to be presented without spot and wrinkle. And so by seeing those things, sometimes intermittently, we start doubting whether we are even saved. Now I want to give you some two points that you have to keep in your heart. Don't go back to the event. Stop thinking about, did I see it right? Uh, was the pastor in the spirit? Was the room filled with the Holy Spirit? Was God in the midst of it? And that is not what it is because if we have believed and confessed, then we are born again. But this is what you're supposed to do. Check your way of life. Check your way of life. It's not the point of conversion, but where you are going. You may realize that you may not be where you want to be, but you are striving every day. There is a struggle in you. Paul says it nicely. He says, the things that I want to do, I can't even do them. But the things I want, I want the things I don't want to do, I do. The things I want to do, I cannot do them. There is such a, such a, such a, a tension within us which is the spirit of God in us, striving to do what is right. And that is where sometimes we sit down and we ask ourselves, are we really saved? Saved. If you are writing notes, write this. It is not the perfection of your life, but the direction of your life. Because some become born again, and we are taking slow uh, we are walking slow pace and some are galloping and still towards the direction of Christ. Maybe you've been born again for three months and you are there already. Your spirit is yielded to him. You know, you, you, you are focused on him and maybe you've been a Christian for five years and you're still 
you know, struggling with things. But as long as your direction is towards him, you are assured of salvation. Think about it carefully. It's where you are going. The direction you are going in your spiritual walk. We determines whether you have salvation or not. My friend, this is where we all start. We start with the cross. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 8 to 10, that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Verse 10 says, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And so that's where we start. Since this body is dying, we know we have a sinful nature. And so what we do is that we come to him boldly and confidently and ask him to forgive us. And when we have done so, we believe that he has come to reside in us. And the question you may ask again is, the past, how do I do that? You do that by faith. In, Romans, in Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9, say, For by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. We are saved. We have been saved by grace through faith. We believed that the work that he did on the cross is complete for us. We know that we couldn't pay for it. It was paid. It was given to us as a gift. The Bible says this is how you do it. Romans 10.10. 10. It says, with your heart, you believe unto righteousness. With your mouth, the confession is made unto salvation. So you believe it is accounted unto you for righteousness and then you confess with your mouth and then you are saved. So you believe that Christ died for you. He died on the cross to save your sins and save me also of my sins. And then you say it with your mouth. You say you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and ask him to come and live in your heart and be the Lord over your life. That is how you get saved. Now, there is an order after you've been saved. You have to think through this over and over again. We draw the assurance of salvation from faith in the fact that scripture is true. It is not based on our feelings. It should be facts first. What did the Bible say? And then we believe what the word said before we feel it. Your salvation is not based on how you feel. It's based on the fact of the word of God. The Bible says if we believe with our heart, we confess with our mouth, we are saved. That is the fact. And so we will believe it by faith. Then we begin to feel it. Feelings is the last part of your salvation. We need to draw assurance of our salvation from scripture, not from the works that we do. As I said, if your direction is towards Christ and towards the cross, then you are assured of salvation. Some are running faster. Some are very slow. The Bible says that when we sin, we have to confess it. The fact that you, 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 you tripped along the way doesn't mean that you don't have salvation. You ask God to forgive you and wash you and keep going forward. You see, the genuineness of our salvation should be assessed by your desires, not merely by your feelings. So what you are desiring, what you are aspiring, what you want God to do in your life. That is very, very important. What you love, what you long for, what you desire. When it comes to joy and the rest, those ones come when we are loving him and we are obeying him. 
Because when you don't obey him, you don't feel joy and peace in your heart. Those are different things. But when it comes to your, uh, your, your, your salvation, you assess it by what you are desiring and the direction you are going. It comes by staring at Christ, looking unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith, looking into his word. And then, thirdly, our spirit also bearing witness. So first and foremost, we stare at Christ we look into his word. Our spirit bears witness. Romans 8, 16 says, The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. There is something within you that will make you know in your knower that you are a child of God. Sometimes the feelings in the periphery is what we struggle through in life. But once you, are, you keep your focus on him, you keep your affections and your desire towards his direction. You are saved. God bless you for tonight. It is 50 minutes of the word. And tomorrow at the same time, I will come to you. And it's going to be for 28 days. Invite friends, invite loved ones. This is a 28-day challenge. If you have questions, write them in. You will have answers in your inbox. God bless you and shalom. And remember, remember that tomorrow we'll come on Zoom. So we'll send you the Zoom um, address and you'll be on there. Enjoy yourself. Stay, stay safe. Bye-bye.